Hey everyone, welcome back to the best U.S. Mint News channel on YouTube. I'm Son of a Silver Stacker. Today's date is July 26, 2024. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the fourth installment for 2024 of the American Women Quarter Program featuring Celia Cruz. And uh, after that, we have Zitkala Shah, and that's it for 2024. And then five more honorees for 2025, and that's it. That's the end of the program. It's amazing how quickly it really has become... Um, you know, from start to finish of this pro particular program. It's like a, a high school career or a super motivated college career in four years, right? So that's kind of amazing. Now, if you're new here, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We're trying to get to a bazillion subs, and we're always live and never edited. Now, over here to JM Bullion, and I wanted to show you this right here. Bam! Yeah, look at that. In honor of the Olympics that start today, the people over at JM Bullion are selling a one-ounce silver Team USA round for two forty nine dollars over spot. I thought that was pretty cool. Wanted to share that with you, seeing how the Olympics start today but not only that it is red friday what's red friday well today is the day we're supposed to wear red in order to show support for deployed troops so i'm already wearing red this morning didn't even uh, have to think about that twice so it looks like gold's up 1588 to 2386.25 silver's up a penny to 28 even steven platinum up 380 to 948.96 and a little bit more parity there yeah, you're looking at palladium up 1166 at 949, 945.39 over here to the bullion sales at the United States Mint. And I got to wonder who does the reporting and the updating of these numbers. Are they on vacation for the last month and a half? If so, bring them back. We need to know these numbers. It's very important. Now, let's go to the product schedule here at the United States Mint a week from last I think it's Tuesday. Um, yeah, two weeks from now, basically, the American Women Quarters featuring the rolls and bags of Celia Cruz. Yeah, those, did I say that right? Celia Cruz drop, and that's going to be awesome. And um, I got to say, you know, one of the things about this American Women Quarter program is the United States Mint found that this was a huge, uh, hugely successful program. And they upped the mintages every, each and every single year. However, I think for next year, for 2025, I do not believe the United States Mint will increase any of the mintages. In fact, they may reduce them uh, much like they did some of the, because we have seen a reduction already. So that's quite interesting. Um, they maybe have overextended themselves. Who knows? Now let's get busy with Celia Cruz over here. American Women Quarters, 2024, rolls and bags featuring Celia Cruz. There it is. What a great infectious smile right there. And that's her catchphrase, sugar. And um, it, it, what a great looking coin. What a great design. And I got to tell you, it, yeah. It's really cool, and I can't wait for this one to come out. It's probably one of my favorite ones of all the American Women Quarters so far. Um, it's right up there with Maya Angelou, uh, Why the Cage Bird Sings. Really beautiful. Now, this is the product limit. It's a stated product limit. doesn't mean the United States has to follow this. They could go over. They could go under. It doesn't matter. This is just a general guideline in uh, my estimation. Now, the product limit for the two-roll set is 7,000, and I think that one's actually been dropped down. Um, the bags is 8,250, and the three-roll set, 16,625. Remember when we first started, it was about 7,000. The following year, it went to, I think, 12,000, and then the third year, the program went to 16,000. 16,625. There's a household order limit of three for the rolls for the first 24 hours and then 10 for the bags. Okay. Now it says here, these are circulating quality coins and um, yeah, th that's great. But I don't think this is where um, registry sets are born. I think that's in the uncirculated uh, coin set. Now here's the description here. The American Women Quarters honor a diverse group of notable or Amer uh, notable American women who made significant contributions in a variety of fields, including suffrage, civil rights, abolition, government, humanity, space, science, and the arts. The women honored for are from ethnically, racially, and geographically diverse backgrounds. Celia Cruz was a Cuban-American singer, cultural icon, and is one of the most popular Latin artists of the 20th century, internationally known as the Queen of Salsa. Cruz's numerous honors and awards include three American and four Latin Grammy Awards, the Presidential Medal of Arts, and countless Lifetime Achievement Awards. Now, here we go. The coins reverse. That's the tales. Features a dynamic depiction of Celia Cruz flashing her dazzling smile while performing in a Roomba-style dress. You know, it wasn't until she started uh, Salsa, that's when she really got very popular. Her signature catchphrase, catchphrase sugar, azúcar, is inscribed on the right. Additional inscriptions are United States of America, E Pluribus Unum, 25 cents, and Celia Cruz. And I dig that 25 cents on there. It's really cool. It's very beautiful. Now, the common, that's the obverse, depicts a portrait of George Washington. This design was originally composed and sculpted by Laura Garden Fraser as a candidate entry for the 1932 quarter. And that was supposed to be a commemorative, a one year only. But they were like, hey, 
they kept on kept on with it as you know which honored the bicentennial of george washington's birth inscriptions are liberty and god we trust and 2024 and it says here honor the courage and accomplishments of extraordinary extraordinary women who have created historic change by starting or adding to your collection of the american women quarters now if you're only starting to collect now that's probably not such a bad thing considering the fact that when these program when this program these quarters first came out they were super hot um, you probably couldn't touch the three roll set um, that, and, and why the three roll set is probably the most uh, popular of all these products is because it has the san francisco uh business strike quarters on them and those are very beautiful and they're hard to find uh the mint started um, making them again in 2012 so that was kind of an amazing thing the united states mint did and could we see b business strike circulating coins from san francisco in the future probably not so this is probably the only place you'll get them now with that said let's keep on keeping on i want to show you here this article at britannica.com britannica did i say that right i don't even know now here we go celia cruz cuban american singer now uh what did she accomplish when did she leave cuba and what was her early life like all right now it says here she's born october 21st 1925 in havana cuba died july 16 2003 in fort lee new jersey was a cuban american singer who reigned for decades as the queen of salsa music electrifying audiences with her right wide range of soulful voice and rhythmically compelling style she grew up in santo suarez a district of havana in an extended family of 14 after high school she attended the normal school for teachers in havana intending to become a literature teacher that's amazing so she was definitely educated after winning the talent show however in which she interpreted the tango piece nostalgia in a bolero tempo cruz interrupted her studies to pursue a singing career her musical breakthrough came in 1950 when she replaced lead singer uh Myrna silva on the popular orchestra la sonora mantaxera and she was the ensemble's first black front person since its founding about 25 years earlier. Cruz sang regularly with the ensemble on radio and television, toured extensively, and appeared with it in the five films produced in Mexico. She also recorded with La Sonora Mantancera and beginning with Canta Celia Cruz, Celia Cruz sings her songs with the group were compiled as full-length albums. In addition, Cruz headlined Havana's Tropicana nightclub in the 1950s. Now, here we go. After the Cuban Revolution of 1959, Havana's nightlife all but disappeared along with the other members of La Sonora Mantecera. Cruz left Cuba for Mexico and then the United States, eventually setting in Jersey. Because why not, right? Where else are you going to go but Jersey? In 1962, she married the orchestra's first trumpet player, Pedro Knight, who became her musical director and manager three years later later after she had left the group and become a solo artist despite recording several albums with band leader tito puente however cruz was slow to find a wide audience in the united states during the 60s and early 70s success came after cruz be identified with salsa a hispanic dance music that evolved from musical experimentation with caribbean sounds that's amazing she recreated herself that's amazing too right anybody that can reinvent themselves or recreate themselves you gotta say kudos to you that's just amazing if you don't have goosebumps right now you better check your pulse all right let's see here let me keep on keeping on she recreated herself for a younger generation of hispanics by singing the latin opera omi 1973 and a version of the who's rock opera tommy right in new york's carnegie hall and recording updated latin classics for johnny pacheco's via record label before long cruise emerged as a central figure within new york's vibrant salsa scene she collaborated with pacheco on a series of albums beginning with celia and johnny and that was in 1974 its dynamic single uh kimbara became one of the signature songs she also made three albums with willie colon and there you go 77 81 and 87 with a voice described as operatic cruise moved through high and low pitches with ease that belied her age. That's amazing, right? Anybody can do that. He's chicken skin again, right? And her style of improv uh, improvising rhymed lyrics added a distinctive flavor to salsa, her flamboyant costumes, which included very colored wigs, tight sequined dresses, and outlandishly high heels, became so famous that one of them was acquired by the Smithsonian Institution. In her later years, Cruz earned renown in a wider circle. She was the subject of a BBC documentary, My Name is Celia Cruz, and she appeared in the films The Mambo Kings, and if you haven't seen that, um, it's a great movie. I think uh, Antonio Banderas is in that movie as well, based on a novel by Oscar uh, Ijules. I probably said that wrong. I apologize. The Paris Family, 1995. Her autobiography, Celia, My Life, 2004, originally published in Spanish, was written with Ana Cristina Raimundo. And her many honors include the Grammy Awards and four Latin Grammys recording, such as Ritmo en el Corazón and 
siempre vivere. Okay, there you go. And um, oh yeah, by the way, in 19, uh, in 2023, I almost said 1923. In 2023, the U.S. government chose Cruise as part of its American Women Quarters program, which features trailblazing women on quarter coin designs. When her coin was released, uh, when her coin is released in 2024, just August 7th, right? She will become the first Afro-Latina to have her likeness appear on U.S. currency. Now, let's go here to the Google machine. Yeah, Celia Cruz, communist. Uh, was she a commie? No, but the American government thought she might have been a commie. Now, it says here, due to her group's renouncement of the communist movement in Cuba, then-President Fidel Castro exiled Cruz and her music in 1960. In 1962, two years later, she was denied re-entry to Cuba for her mother's funeral. That seems really petty to me. I guess you don't want to speak out on the petty dictators, right? Now it says here in 1990 of January, Cuban singer Celia Cruz, known as a queen of salsa, went back to Cuba, but only to the U.S. naval base in Guantanamo Bay. Isn't that something? Now, I wanted to show you this article here, an untold chapter in the life of Celia Cruz. At her death uh, a year ago, and this is from um, the Miami Herald, Sunday, July 25, 2004, untold chapter of her life. Yeah, she was an anti-communist icon of the Cuban American exile community. Doesn't say that too much in this American Women Quarters uh, description, does it? Makes you wonder why. Now, let's go here to the, three, the plus ones. Here we go. This is uh, judgment. Judge everyone charitably and give everyone the benefit of the doubt. Believe something good about someone rather than something bad. And I think if we can do that, we can keep ourselves out of trouble in a big way and quite often, right? So yeah, just put on a happy face and judge everybody, uh, everybody charitably. Maybe you don't have to do the happy face thing, but, you know, don't think something bad of somebody. You don't know their motivation. You really don't. I mean, just if like if somebody cuts you off, maybe they got to go to the bathroom really bad and get home really quickly. Or maybe they, you know what I'm saying? Just lighten up, zoom out, and let them have their space. Now let's go to the 99.9 KOI in Coin News Radio. This is Dire Straits, the walk of life. That's how you do it. That's the walk of life. You got to judge charitably. Otherwise, well, you might be wound up in a bunch of you know what. Now with that said, I want to thank you all for coming. Thanks for dropping by. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you like what you hear and see, sub the channel. It's quite free. Stack her out.